What's up everybody? Coach Zach here with Team Critical Bench and in this video we're talking all about nasal breathing. The importance of breathing using your nose. Let's get it. Before we talk about the benefits of nasal breathing, first let's talk about why you don't want to be a mouth breather. When you breathe using your mouth, more than likely you're using your accessory muscles to breathe. You're not using your diaphragm, you're using your intercostals, your scalenes, your upper traps, pecs, and you want to get more in the habit of using your diaphragm, which will be a lot easier if you practice nasal breathing. Being a mouth breather will also lead to having dry mouth. You don't want to be that guy or girl that has bad breath everywhere you go. You don't. You will also be more likely to have gingivitis or gum problems. Another huge side effect of being a mouth breather is that you will undergo facial changes. When you're a mouth breather, your tongue will not be in its correct position. The tongue is supposed to be at the roof of the mouth. We'll talk about tongue posture in another video. But when you're a mouth breather, your tongue has to rest away from the roof of the mouth to allow the air to enter in through your mouth. When that happens, the face will begin to change. Gravity will take its toll. You will have a narrower jaw. Your facial structure will begin to droop which can lead to so many other problems. Also, being a mouth breather will promote forward head posture, which so many of us deal with as it is because we're always on our phones or our computers. You don't want to make it worse by being a mouth breather. When you're breathing in and out of your mouth, your body will have to adjust by sending your head forward to make a little bit more room for the air to come through your mouth. This will, this will promote that forward head posture, making your head a lot more heavy and overall just degenerating your posture and your well-being. To recap, you don't want to be a mouth breather because you will be more likely to use your accessory muscles instead of your diaphragm. You will have dry mouth and stinky breath. Mm. You will undergo facial changes, your face will begin to droop, it will be harder for you to breathe with your nose, and you will be uglier, and you will have more of a forward head posture, which we don't want to have. So now let's talk about the benefits of breathing using your nose. So now that we talked about why you don't want to be a mouth breather, let's flip it around and talk about something positive. Why you should want to be a nasal breather. So first of all, when you're inhaling with your nose, you're going to be filtering and warming the air. I mean, think about it. You have nose hairs in your nose that will help pick up dust or other particles that you don't want in your lungs. When you're breathing through your mouth, you're just taking all that air in, all those dust particles, all the dead skin, all the nasty stuff that you don't want in your lungs. Another thing that nose breathing does is it warms the air. It makes the air the proper temperature for it to be better digested by your lungs. Now, this is the big one. Another big reason why you should be breathing with your nose is because of carbon dioxide. Now, so many of us are taught that carbon dioxide is the waste product of our breathing. Right? A lot of us think that we want to get in as much oxygen as possible and get out as much carbon dioxide as we can. And that simply is not true. This is otherwise known as the Bohr effect. It might sound boring to some of you, but this is spelled a little bit differently, so stay with me. Here's the paradox with breathing. When you breathe, the oxygen will go into your lungs and then go into your blood. However, your blood is just transporting that oxygen around. It's not actually doing any good in your blood. That oxygen needs to get into the tissues of the body that use it. Your brain, your muscles, your organs. So how does the oxygen get from your blood to where it needs to go? It gets to where it needs to go 
with carbon dioxide. What the Bohr effect is saying is that your oxygen is bound to your blood. And the only way that it will leave the blood and get to where it needs to go is with the presence of carbon dioxide. So after all, carbon dioxide is not a waste product that you want to get rid of. You actually need carbon dioxide to use the oxygen that you're breathing in. The problem with mouth breathing, specifically exhaling out of the mouth, is that you're offloading, you're getting rid of too much carbon dioxide. You're disrupting that balance, which will lead to that oxygen staying in the blood, being bound to that hemoglobin and not actually getting to where it needs to go. So even though you might think that you're taking deep breaths, and you might think that you're really oxygenating your body, well, that's not the case. The oxygen in your blood is fine, but that oxygen is not getting to where it needs to go because you're getting rid of too much carbon dioxide. What is the solution to this? <laughs> breathing with your nose. Hey, the nose is made for breathing, right? So when you exhale out of your nose, your body keeps the perfect balance of oxygen and carbon dioxide to allow your body to actually use the oxygen that you're breathing in. Another big reason why you should be breathing with your nose is because of nitric oxide. Nitric oxide might sound familiar to some of you. You might have heard it in your pre-workouts. You might have heard it in beet juice. What nitric oxide is, it's, it's a vasodilator. It helps dilate your blood vessels and helps improve circulation. So why are we talking about nitric oxide now when we're talking about nose breathing? Because your nose produces nitric oxide simply by using it to breathe, right? Nitric oxide is produced in the nasal cavities, in the parasinuses of the nose. So when you breathe into your nose, you're activating these nitric oxide systems, which will then bring that air down into your lungs, carrying with it nitric oxide. What that nitric oxide will do is it will begin to dilate your airways, making the air more easily able to go through. And then that nitric oxide will lead into the blood vessels, the circulation, dilating your blood, allowing the blood and the nutrients to flow more freely. Now, nitric oxide is extremely important for so many different processes in the body. To name a few, it's important for vasoregulation, the ability for your blood vessels to open up and close. It also is really important for the movement of neurotransmitters in the brain. It's also important for your immune system. And then another big thing that nitric oxide can prevent is high blood pressure. All right, think about it. If your blood vessels are a little bit more open, then there's gonna be less pressure that the blood is exerting on the surfaces of those blood vessels. This can also prevent strokes, can prevent cardiac disease, and it can also prevent clogged arteries due to atherosclerosis. So to recap, the reason why you wanna breathe with your nose is first of all, that means that you're not a mouth breather. As we already talked about, Mouth breathing will lead to a dry mouth, smelly breath, ugly face, it will start to droop, you won't get the proper oxygen to the tissues. All in all, mouth breathing is nasty, stop doing it. Breathe with your nose, which will help filter and warm the air, which will make it more digestible for your lungs. It will also keep the adequate amount of carbon dioxide in your blood, which will allow that oxygen to get where it needs to go and it will also produce nitric oxide, which has so many beneficial effects on the body, from dilating your blood vessels to preventing stroke or preventing high blood pressure. So now that we've gone over the importance of breathing with your nose, check out another one of my videos where we go into the practical aspects of nose breathing, where I'm gonna be showing you some techniques and practical applications that will help you breathe better with your nose. Speaking of mouth breathing, Let's avoid that forward head posture. And I got just the thing for you. The forward head posture fix. It's a program that will allow you to have better posture of your head. It will help you breathe better, sleep better, perform better. Overall, having better neck posture will just make you better at anything you do. 
If you want that program, go ahead and check out the pinned comment down below. As always, I'm Coach Zach with Team Critical Bench, and I'll see you next time.